Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be talking about how to work with a master document in LibreOffice 7. It can save you a ton of work in situations where many people are working on the same document and they are using different files or yourself, if you are, say, for example, writing a book and every chapter of that book is in a different file. How do you bring them all together and style them in a uniform way? So if you are in such kind of a situation, it can save you a ton of work. Before I move forward, I would like to suggest that uh, it will be very helpful if you can have a look at the styling video that I did earlier. And I'm including a link to that video in the description of this tutorial. So let me just describe this situation through a case where uh, master documents can actually be very helpful. Let's say we are working in a small office and we are trying to create a report on the impacts of information technology on the society. So I'm doing one chapter. I'll be working on the introductory chapter and that chapter will be titled as IT and Society. And one of my colleagues is then working on another chapter independently and she will be working on the chapter on digital divide. And yet another colleague is working on the impact of uh, social media on society. So each one of us are working at different locations and we are using three different files. As you can see, we are using very different styling in each of our documents. The only thing that we have agreed upon is that uh, whenever we will use a heading or a subheading, we will style it as heading one or heading two. Beyond that, everybody is free to do what they want, even though it is very useful if everybody can actually work with the same template. But then that is exactly what the master document tries to work around. So how do we bring all these documents? Let us say when they have finished their chapters, they have mailed it to me. How do I bring them all together and create a uniformity um, in, in, in styling, etc., such that a finished document, combined finished document, can actually be produced. So that is where the concept of master document comes into play. What I can do in LibreOffice Writer is that I can actually create a master document and I can put some styling inside the master document. And then what I can do is I can bring these documents one by one inside the uh, the master document or the container document. Very interestingly, when I do this, these documents actually physically do not arrive inside the container document. That is, the text inside is not actually copied inside the master document. They are only linked inside the master document. So what this means basically is that when I link these documents inside my master document container, any styling that is inside the master document becomes the styling of each of these documents, whereas individually, these documents would, if you were to open them individually, they would retain their own individual styles. But when they get linked with the master document, they, they get the styling of the master document. And in this way, we can create a uniform document styling inside the master document container. So this is the broad overview. Let me give you a specific example, continuing with the same scenario. Let us say, for example, as far as my document is concerned, I have uh, given heading one in blue color inside my document and I have used uh, green color for heading two inside my document whenever I had a heading. My colleague has a very different kind of styling for heading one and heading two. She has it in purple and heading two in yellow and the other colleague in a very different way has heading one in green and heading two in red. So when I actually start bringing these documents or linking these documents inside a master document, the order in which these documents uh, are brought in becomes very important. Because when I start a master document, the only styling that that document has is that of the default paragraph. As the cursor starts blinking inside the master document, the only styling that is alive inside the master document is actually that of the default paragraph. Beyond this, the order in which the documents are linked inside the, the master document becomes therefore very important. So let us say I bring my document inside as I have set uh, the styling I will be using inside this uh, 
this final report, I bring my document inside first. And what happens is that anything that I have styled inside my document, like heading one and heading two, then is inherited by the master document as the styling of the master document. So now the, the styling of uh, my document, whatever I have styled inside my document, is then the styling of the master document. Now, second in order, when I bring my colleague's file in, this styling that she had is now ignored and all heading one and heading two are shown as blue and green. And then finally, I bring the third document inside. Once again, the heading one and heading two styling that my colleague used or any other styling that my colleague used that I have used differently is then completely ignored. And when all of these uh, documents are linked together, they have one common styling. The only exception to this rule is that if in any of these documents, if you have used direct formatting, which means that you have, say, for example, selected a piece of text and made it bold or changed that particular piece of text in another color, then that will be carried forward and will be visible inside this particular document. If you have applied no direct formatting and controlled your document through styling alone, then that styling will be ignored. If a styling has already been done by me um, inside my first document. So, uh, but if you were to open these individual documents, as I had mentioned earlier, they would continue to maintain their individual style. So this is, uh, this is a scenario that I wanted to uh, share with you. Let us just have a look at a slightly different sequence. Let us say, for example, uh, as I was just mentioning, I have my heading one and heading two in a certain color. My second colleague has it in a different color. And my third colleague has it in a different color. What if, if I brought this, uh, my colleague's document in first? So if I change the order and bring this document first, heading one and two will then inherit this style that my colleague followed and when I bring my document in this time uh, the styling that I followed will be ignored and uh, my heading one and two will actually uh, inherit the color of my colleague's styling and the same will happen to the third colleague also. So this is uh, this is how this uh, the master document styling precedence order works. And one other great advantage of uh, master documents is that once this container document is linked to different documents, it is actually reading as a single document. So what can also be done is that while I have brought my documents in a certain sequence, I can rearrange them. And so I can catch hold of this and then just simply move it down and then catch hold of this and move it up. And so the whole chunk of uh, what is contained inside document three moves up or down. So I can rearrange my content. And then this whole document reads as a single document. I can present a unified table of contents. All the tables, figures, and paragraph numbering will be continuous. And um, if there are references in each of these documents, they will be presented in a unified bibliography. So I can do all this inside a master document. And then finally, also export it like a normal ODT file. The master document itself is uh, saved as a ODM file. So this is the difference between a master document and a normal um, LibreOffice writer file. The extensions are different. And I can export the master document as an ODT file. So this is, in short, a brief background on master documents. Let us now head uh, to LibreOffice 7 and see how we can do this in practical terms. So let's just uh, quickly have a look. Um, this folder has the three different files. The first is the one that I am working on and two files that I've received from my colleagues. So. I'm going to just come here and very quickly uh, have a look at the file that I'm working on. And we'll also see the files that others have sent to me. So like this is the file that I am working on. So this is a heading. So I'll just come here and go and give it a styling. So this is heading one. And then I'm just going to go down and this is heading two. So as agreed, I will just keep labeling 
or styling all my headings. So this is once again heading 2. And my colleagues have also done the same. So the files that I will just show you will have similar kind of styling. Uh, I was mentioning about uh, direct formatting. So direct formatting is something like if you're just coming here, selecting this and making it bold or making it in a certain color, then this is direct formatting. And you can always clear direct formatting uh, by just selecting it and pressing Control and M or just simply right clicking and choosing clear direct formatting. So if you are formatting something directly inside the document, when you are going to link this file to um, the master document, this kind of a formatting will actually show there. But if you are just simply sticking to style, whatever change you have to make, you are making in the styling itself. Um, and just come here and uh, you know click on this button and modify the style. So whatever changes you are making, if you want to make it through styling, then that is the scenario that I had spoken about earlier. So let's just keep moving forward. Let me put in a few references here. So I'm going to come here and click on Zotero and enter some references. So I will just uh, information technology and its impact on society. Let me pick this reference. And let me take in another reference just for the sake of demonstration. So I've created a, a video earlier uh, on how to put in references and you can have a look at it. I'll give the a link in the uh, in the description. So just come here and let us um, take another one and just go ahead and put another reference here. So I have put in two references and I have uh, put in my style here, heading one and heading two. So for the purposes of demonstration, I think this should be enough. And notice that I have um, uh, some figures that I have labeled here, captioned here. And the, the, these are having numbering related to this particular file because this is an independent file. So this is figure one. And there is a table here. This is table one. And then there's another figure. So this is figure two. So I'm just going to save this and show you the other files that I have received from my colleagues. So I'm opening up the second chapter that I have received from my colleague. And they have already done this. So click and this is heading one and this is heading two. And they've put in one reference here. And this is a figure that they have put in. So this is labeled because this is an independent file. This is uh, labeled as figure one. And another reference, so two references in this document, two references in my document. And then there's a table here. So this is uh, table one. Uh, in this particular document, there's only one table. And let me just close this and let's have a look at the third file, which has come from the third colleague. So we will just open that. And once again, um, they have uh, styled it like this, heading one, this is heading two, and they've put in one reference. They have two figures. So again, uh, in chapter three, this is figure one, and this is figure two. Uh, and they have one table, which is table one. So all in all, they have one references. So um, two references for my document, two references for my first colleague, four. And in this document, there's only one reference altogether, five references, a few figures, few tables, all labeled and numbered independently. So um, let me just um, start. And let me now start creating a master document because I want to pull all of these three documents in, into one document. So I'm going to go to file and then go to new. And then going to come here and choose master document. So the master document opens up and we will see a navigator window that we will use to bring in our documents. But we'll just keep that uh, aside for a little while. You will notice that this master document is blank. And the only thing that we need to do in this master document is that we can style the if you look at this blinking cursor here, 
and expand the styles box which you can do from here or you can do from styles and manage styles so you will notice that this blinking cursor is basically a default paragraph style and you will notice that it is currently in libra liberation serif so if we wanted to change this or modify this a little bit we can just right click on it and click on modify and then maybe just tweak it a little bit so let us say for example if i wanted it in a different font like say for example libre baskerville and i wanted the um, alignment to be justified so i can do that i can um, make sure that it is 1.5 lines in spacing and so on and so forth so i can make some changes here then i can just come here and press apply and okay so you will notice that this default paragraph styling has changed in the in the master document so this will ensure that all uh, default text that we are importing is then in this particular font and in this particular size it will be aligned and it will be spaced 1.5 lines it's time now to bring in our documents also notice there's nothing else no other styling is here except for this default paragraph so let's bring in our other documents so we can just come here and click on this insert icon and there's a little uh, drop down right here so you can just click on that and while we can create a new document and type right here we can also bring in a file so that's exactly what we want to do and just before i proceed forward i just want to mention that if you accidentally click on this one um, double click on this you might find that this box expands and if you wanted to ever get back again to your uh, master view you can just click on this upper icon here toggle master view icon and you will get back to your master view so we'll click on insert and then go ahead and click on file and we are going to bring in uh, the first file this is my file because i will be bringing this file first any styling that i have used in this file will be uh, inherited by the master document and all subsequent documents that i bring in will follow the style of the first document so i'm going to click on this and then come here and press open so my first document is brought in and it shows up right here and it is telling me that it is linked it is not uh, you know it has not been stuffed here which means that if i make a change in the original document uh, it will be immediately reflected here uh, this is the button to refresh so for example if i go back and make a change i will have to come back and then um, click on this and then refresh everything everything inside uh, all documents will get refreshed and that change will become reflected inside this particular document so i have brought this in and you will notice that um, by default the, the the default paragraph styling is now libre baskerville even though i haven't used that in the first document and you will also notice that heading one is blue as it was the case in my document and the uh, the heading two is a uh, green in color and you will also notice that the figure number is one and as i move down the table number is also one so if i wanted to make any changes here say for example i find there is a gap here so i would have to do this in the original document and the way i can do it is to just double click on this original document the document is going to open and um, you will immediately see this so you can just delete it from here the extra spaces and then you can just save it and then close the document so you will be taken back once again to your original document and it is here that you can now come back and click on this icon update and click on all so just go ahead and press yes to this question you will see that uh, something has changed here that space has gone but if for example you wanted to make a direct change here you can also do that uh, even though if i wanted to do something here it is going to say no so if i wanted to type something it will just come back and say this document is right protected if you want to make a change go to the original document and make it there uh, 
But if suppose I wanted to make that change here, um, I just have to right click and then edit section and then unprotect this document. So I will just remove this check and press OK. Now I can delete this space. And then once I'm done, I'm going to right click again, go to edit section. You will notice that the protect tab is already on and I will just go ahead and press OK. So I have locked this document once again. So this is how I can bring uh, my document and you will notice that this is figure number two. Let us bring in now another document. So I'm going to come back here once again, insert, go to this drop down, and then just come here and press file once again. And this time around, I'm going to bring in my second document that was sent to me by my colleague. And you will remember that this had headings in purple and heading two in uh, yellow. So I'm going to bring that in, this document, and just go ahead and press open. So this document also lands up here. And uh, let me just show this to you. And you will notice that uh, the, the heading two is not yellow, but it is green because the style was already inherited from my document. The heading one is blue. And you will notice that this chapter two has landed on top of chapter one. If you want to bring it down, you can just click on it and push down from here. Or otherwise, you can just simply drag and drop it. So you can just move it by dragging and dropping. That is also very much possible. So once this is done, you will notice that uh, the second document has been brought here. Uh, but I wanted to show you a couple of interesting things. Uh, my first document had two figures. Uh, they were labeled as a figure one and two. And in the original document, uh, the one that my colleague sent to me, chapter two, uh, it had figures, they were labeled also as one and two in the original document, but here when they are brought inside the master document, they are labeled as three um, and the table is labeled as two. So uh, you can see that this is continuous numbering. If I wanted to remove this space, I will just right click, edit the section, unprotect it for a little bit, and then just come here and remove this much of space, right click, edit section, and then protect it back again. Let me bring in the third file and we will come back here once again and click on file and then come and click on this chapter. Remember here, headings one were in green and headings two were in red. So I'm going to click on this and press open. So you will notice that the new chapter has come in. It is not placed properly. So I can just drag and bring it under chapter two. And you will notice again that table number is labeled as three and the figure is numbered as four and five. So let's do a few more things to make this document complete. Uh, many times we need to number these headings. Um, headings one uh, followed by headings two in sequence. So we can do that quite easily in the master document. Just go to tools, go to chapter numbering, click on it. And here you can set uh, options for um, heading style one, heading style two, three, and so on and so forth. We are using only two styles in this document. So I'm going to click on one and come here. Currently it is none. I'm going to set this as one, two, three. And if you wanted to write something before the number, that is, this will be numbered as one. If you wanted to write bef anything before one and anything after one, you can do that here. So just for the sake of demonstration, if I wanted to write chapter in front of one, I'm going to write that here before, give it a space. And then after, I'm going to put a dot and give it a space. Likewise for uh, heading two, so instead of none, we will come here and choose numbering. And that's just about it. We are not writing anything before or after uh, heading style two. So we can just press OK now that we have done it for one and two. And you will see that uh, headings have been numbered. So you will see that all these chapters are now, the headings, heading ones are now 
Our title is chapter one and all subheadings are accordingly um, having uh, sequential numbering. As we come to the second chapter, it is chapter two and uh, subheadings follow uh, chapter 2.1, 2.2 and so on and so forth. And the third chapter starts as chapter three and subheadings accordingly, 3.1, 3.2 so on and so forth. So if you find any anomalies here, like uh, in numbering, say for example, blank spaces getting numbers, uh, like here, you can either go back to the original document and remove this uh, numbering from there, or otherwise, if you wanted to do it here, you can just simply follow the same technique told earlier, right click, edit, unprotect the document, and then just remove it, and then right click, and edit section and then protect the document once again. So this is how you can introduce numbering. Uh, let us now just have a quick look at references. You will notice that we had five references and all of them are here. They are being shown here as shaded fields. If you don't see them as shaded fields, you can always come to view and click on field shadings. So they will appear as shaded fields. Uh, now I wanted to introduce a unified bibliography. These are three separate documents uh, and I wanted to create a unified bibliography. So I have my Zotero plugin on and Zotero is uh, active. Um, I'm going to come down to the end of the document and let me see where I am. So I'll just press a few enters to come out of the woods and then um, control enter to start a fresh page. And I can just type references, okay? And if required, I can give this also, style this as heading one. So I can go to styles and choose this as heading one. And if I'm not really interested in chapter four right here, I can just delete it very uh, specifically for references. Everything else carries the same styling. This does not mean that um, uh, for other heading ones, the chapter will go away. So there we are. And we can just come here and come down. And then just um, use add edit bibliography as we would do in a normal document. So if you were to go to your Zotero software, you'll find that a new dialog has opened up here and it is asking you for the style in which it will bring in the references. So I'm going to come here and use APA 7th edition. You can choose any style that you wish or even later on convert it to any style that you wish. Just go ahead and press OK. So when you do that, your references are going to land up right here. Uh, we had five references, so these references have landed up right here. Let's say we go back to one of our original documents. I'm going to go back here and double click on this and open up one of my original documents. Uh, this had only one reference. And let me just go ahead and add one more reference, right? So this had just one reference here. And let me just go back and add another reference or citation. And I will just come here. Go to classic view and choose Jones and add it here. So I can just save my document and close it. So I'm back again in my master document. It still has five references. And uh, what I need to do now is to just refresh this whole thing. So I will come here and press all and press yes. So any changes that I've made in my document will come, not the references though. To get that reference, I don't need to redo the bibliography. This is very important. This is one way I found that this works. So just come back here and click on refresh. So if you click on refresh, you will now see that Jones uh, reference has come back again. So you can go back to individual documents, keep adding references, and then just come back here and press refresh on the, um, on, on the Zotero bibliography toolbar, and that reference should come back in. So we now have references, a way to put in references. Our figures are numbered in sequence. 
um, and we have labeled or um, numbered each uh, heading. Uh, we can now just go ahead and go to the top of this document and insert an index. So this is going to bring in a unified uh, a table of uh, contents. So I can just click on index and this is my table of contents. I can also bring in a table of figures later on if I wanted to. In the same way, I can also bring in an index of table. Currently, I'm just showing you how to bring in a table of contents. So we will just go here and press OK. And a table of contents is now placed right at the top. I've started with this. And as you can see, all my uh, chapters and their subheadings are reflected inside this table of contents. So um, I have created a full document, full master document. Individual documents remain as they are, but when they are brought inside a master document, they can be viewed as a single document and I can apply uniform styling. So this can save a ton of work in certain situations and uh, it's a very, very useful tool. So I can now come here and save this master document and it will be saved as uh, ODM, okay? As you can see here. And what I can also do is to come to file and export and I can export it as a ODT document, which is a normal text document that I can work upon, right? like for example, bring in a cover and so on and so forth. Uh, when you export it as an ODT document, uh, it will be exported as sections and you will have to uh, you know, use the same technique to unprotect it, right click, edit sections and unprotect those sections if you want to have a free flowing document. Before we conclude, uh, one final word. If by any chance you happen to lose this navigator window, say for example, if you clicked on this, you can get it back by going to view and then clicking on navigator. Uh, you can also press uh, function key 5, F5, and this window will pop right back. I've already mentioned earlier that if by accident, if you click on this icon here, it opens up an expanded view. And if you wanted to get back again to your original view, that is get rid of all these things, just click on this once again, and you will get back your original master view on this particular window. So just one final point that if you want to ensure that every chapter or every file that you have brought in starts from the top of a fresh page, you just have to come to heading one and open the styling and right click on heading one and modify. And you have to make sure that you have selected the text flow tab and this insert checkbox is marked or checked. Check on the insert checkbox and press apply and OK. So this will ensure that after you have brought in your various files, um, every chapter or every file starts from the top of the page, a fresh page. So I hope you found this video useful. Uh, you can experiment with this and uh, try to see what works for you. Thank you so much for watching.